I'm super excited to give you guys some tips on how to support your immune system because as you know, we're going through some rough times and people have a lot of fear and anxiety about getting sick. But there's another part of the picture that really isn't getting focused enough on in the media. And that is we have the power to work on our own immune health. And if we're given the tools, we don't need to be in fear. There are many things that we can do and focus on to get healthy, to boost and fortify our bodies. And recently, you know, on the news and the media, there's a lot of talk about germs. So I love this little quote on the right side. It says, health is not the result of zero germs. It's the result of a robust immune system that's regularly exposed to germs and learns to fight them. And the idea is, you know, you can focus on prevention, like washing hands, wearing masks. But the other part of this equation is how do you live in the world with germs and viruses and thrive? Because we're meant to do that. In fact, our bodies are filled with bacteria and viruses. We have more bacteria cells than human cells. 10 to 1. We're actually more bacteria than human. And so a lot of the bacteria is actually serving us. They digest our food, produce B vitamins and vitamin K, and it's part of our immune system. So we need to be aware of how to support these friendly bacteria and not to be fearful of them. So I want to dive into the concept of uh, maintaining health. Just like in accounting or in your bank account, you want to make sure you have money <laughs> and you don't go into debt. And it's the same thing running a business, you want to lower your cost and increase your revenue. So that's how you maximize profit. Health is the same way of thinking. So you lower the toxic burden on your body and you increase the nourishment. Toxins come in various forms. There's toxins in the water. Um, so make sure you have a good water filter, get rid of that chlorine, the fluoride, the lead and all the heavy metals. And make sure, you know, the air quality that you're breathing, it, you know, there's no mold in the house and the food that you eat does not have heavy pesticides. And just make sure that you're not going through with too much sugar because sugar is also very toxic on the body. It renders the, the blood very acidic and it also depletes the body of minerals. Minerals are required to metabolize sugar. When you eat a fruit like an apple, which is sweet, it comes in a package. It has enzymes, it has minerals, it has fiber, and it helps the body metabolize that fructose. But if you just take pure sugar, like you would pour into coffee, and which is double acidic, um, now you're requiring your body to take some of its own minerals. Over time, you can be very deficient in minerals, which makes you very acidic. Minerals are, are very alkaline. So there's many different toxins, but one really big one is emotional toxicity. And that is fear, uh, stress, and negative emotions. So the biggest priority really is to lower your toxins. Emotional health is very, very key. Um, and then increase the nourishment, increase in whole foods. All of these colorful uh, phytonutrients, they're the antioxidants that you would need to then reduce stress and give you that vitality that you want. And another kind of nourishment is positive emotions. So focus on love and gratitude and bring your vibration higher and that will fortify your immune system. So there's five main areas that I want to focus on here. Number one is to lower stress and raise joy, raise positive emotions. Number two, it's on your diet and how you nourish yourself through food and through clean water and clean herbal teas and drinks. The third one is supplements, supplements to support your immune system. The fourth pillar is exercise and raising your body temperature, getting your circulation, your lymphatic system moving and detoxifying. And the fifth one, which is so important, but it's always kind of not prioritized and it's sleep. There's so many sleep deprived people walking around with lots of coffee trying to, you know, overcome that uh, fatigue. But um, I put this little picture of a combination lock because you can do four out of five and the lock won't really open, right? You can have four out of five letters or numbers in the code, but without all five, you won't really unlock that robust immune system. And it doesn't mean that you don't do it at all. You could do all four and it'll still be better than just doing one, for example. But you know that you can't just say, I eat well, I sleep well, I exercise. But then why am I sick? And then you realize, well, I've been under a lot of stress. I have negative self-talk. 
that could really hinder your immune system. So really make sure that you kind of be mindful of these five areas. I want to just go over what stress does to your body and how you can rebalance that type of reaction. So the first type of stress response, the initial is fight or flight. And it's, it's kind of like when in the old days, uh, people see a lion or an immediate threat, like a bear. But today it's more like traffic or someone honking at you or someone cutting you off in traffic or even watching the news and they say, oh my God, there's all these number of positive cases. And you get that jolt in your body where you feel your heart racing. There's that adrenaline rush. That is the moment where your body shoots adrenaline and cortisol. And what happens though, is that it uses up nutrients to do that. It uses a vitamin C, E, B complex, minerals such as magnesium and zinc. Those are the first two minerals to go as soon as you get stressed. You, you're going to deplete the zinc and magnesium and potassium. And this is why people start getting anxiety because these minerals actually help you sleep better. Um, they help you relax your muscles. And if you deplete these minerals, you will start to get things like restless legs or just a low level of fatigue that you don't feel calm. So basically during that time, it's very important to supplement on these types of minerals and vitamins. And also one thing that happens is your organs are usually suppressed during that time. Um, meaning your digestion is stopped when you're in fight or flight, because think about it, if you're going to be running, you know, away from a lion, you're not going to have time to sit and eat. You don't have time to poop and pee. So when you're in fight or flight, it's really best not even to eat much because you're just going to cause some fermentation in your gut and you're going to cause bloating. So you need to calm yourself down before you start to eat. The second phase of stress is called the resistance phase. You know, you don't sleep well and your body knows that there's no immediate threat, but it's trying to normalize the stress hormones by excreting them out of your body. But let's say your liver isn't really in the best shape because your liver is the filter of your body and it's trying to filter out all of these, like it'll decompose these stress hormones and filter it out of your body. But if your liver is congested, what happens is those stress hormones stay elevated and they stay elevated for a longer period of time than normal. Now, during that time, a couple of things will happen. You will most likely a lot of people will gain weight because fat tissues actually protect your body from toxins. So they'll take in all of these excess hormones. People can get irritable and forgetful. And those are some signs that your body is really trying to normalize and get rid of the stress hormones. And this is the phase where adaptogens help. When I was looking more about athletes, how they, um, there's some athletes in Japan and Asia, they use cordyceps and reishi, which is an adaptogen, and they use it to increase the oxygen in their cells. So when they run, when they do a, a long endurance exercise, they have enough oxygen to, to uh, actually more than the other athletes. And when they test for steroids, they're like, well, this, these people are not taking any steroids or drugs, but it was actually the adaptogens that helped them. So the third phase is uh, what we call the exhaustion phase. And you really don't want to get to that phase. This is where burnout comes. This is where you're more vulnerable to illness. This is when people get hopeless. They feel like they, their body is not able to sustain certain functions. And so they get anxiety and depression. Um, so I wanted to just focus a little bit on ways that you will prevent yourself from getting to that point and how you can sustain your immune system through periods of stress. So number one, um, because fear and negative emotions weaken our immune system, it's really important to kind of protect your energy, kind of like a little bubble, but stay away from negative or toxic people or news. And if the news really bother you, just take breaks from it and practice positive self affirmations, which is statements that you tell yourself, such as I am healthy, I am strong. You know, you can do that in the morning, you can do that at night before going to bed. And by saying that, it actually resonates with the cells in your body. Many different people who had um, survived from cancer and they basically had affirmed themselves over and over again because we're so used to negative self-talk. And so just kind of be mindful of how, how you think and what you tell yourself. And also doing deep breathing exercises and yoga, stretching can really help release the uh, acidic and toxic buildup in your muscles. Um, prayer and meditation being mindful and using essential oils that can be very helpful. Like wild orange is a very uplifting scent. Um, why I highlighted mindfulness is because I often get the question, what is the difference between meditation and mindfulness? And so I just want to clear that up. Meditation is when you quiet your mind, 
and you focus, let's say on one thing, you focus on your breath and eventually over time you focus on nothing. So there's no, no thoughts. It's really the gap between thoughts that's kind of reset of your brain. But mindfulness is when you're actually doing something, let's say you're eating and you're mindfully chewing. So you're focusing on the present moment. You're focusing on the texture of the food, how you are in your body. So let's say you're chopping up food when you're cooking, you're focusing on that activity and that present moment. And that actually helps to alleviate the worries of the past and the future. And so that is a great practice to lower stress. The other thing is to boost your mood. So remember that whole cycle of lowering stress, increasing joy. So look for hobbies, look for things that make you feel good, watch uplifting movies and listen to upbeat music, connect with people you love and um, go out and get some sun and watch comedies. You know, some people have laughed themselves to health. And this also I've seen through cancer uh, patients who focus on watching comedies and, you know, obviously with the nutrition and all the others, but elevating your spirit is really important during this time. Um, and laughter really is the best medicine. So above all, you know, just remember uh, how you feel makes a big impact on your immune health. Here is the second part of this code <laughs> to unlocking you know, immune health, and that is with diet. So there's so much I can talk about diet. I would love to talk to you and do meal plans, but for now, we don't have a lot of time. I just wanna focus on a few key points. In your diet, look for colors of plants, plant-based foods like you know, uh, fruits, vegetables, and nuts and seeds. Also, um, think about adding more healthy fats into your diet, like avocado and fish oils, coconut oil. Nuts and seeds also have really good oils and minerals. Um, use olive oil, grass-fed butter. Don't be afraid of these healthy fats. What you don't want is the rancid fats from hydrogenated oils and modified oils that you get through processed foods. So you want to focus on whole foods that have already the, the healthy fats in them and also to um, incorporate fermented foods. Um, fermented foods is great for your gut because it already has a lot of good bacteria and things like miso, sauerkraut, kimchi, those are great things you can have with your meal as a side dish. Kefir is great too. It's a fermented milk that has lots of good bacteria, has more strains than the usual probiotics. So it's really great. Some people actually gargle with kefir to replenish the microbiome in their mouth and their sinus cavity because the, the, these types of bacteria, they exist all over your body, not just in your gut. Um, incorporate herbs and spices because those have anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial properties to reduce um, stress, to fight off pathogens, and some also can kill uh, parasites. And then look at foods that have vitamins and sulfuric rich foods such as cruciferous vegetables. Um, these are things like broccoli and cabbage, cauliflower. Also known as foods that don't smell too good to a lot of kids. They're like, oh, you know, Brussels sprouts, they don't smell that good. And that's the sulfur in it. That's the one, that's the a component that helps your liver generate um, glutathione, which is, a, which is a very strong antioxidant. So you need sulfur, sulfuric foods. One thing I like to do is I like these uh, green powders, such as chlorella and spirulina. These are considered to be sort of seaweed, uh, algaes, and they have a lot of minerals. So if you're too busy to make a smoothie with greens, you can get some powder chlorella and put it into water and just drink that. That has a lot of minerals. Look for whole grains, um, you know, like wild rice, quinoa, millets, and also pay attention to the water that you drink. Make sure it's filtered so there's no heavy metals. And you can add lemon and, and different herbs in there. In fact, like I do this a lot with oregano. I don't actually put oregano in my food that much. I'll take it and I'll put it in hot water and I'll make a tea out of it. And I'll drink that through the day. Um, and avoid sugar and processed foods as much as you can. Um, just wanted to touch on a few key habits of eating. Remember I had said earlier that when you're stressed, your organs kind of shut down. So before you eat, just take some time to relax. Take three deep breaths. All right, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is say a prayer. And, and that is not just for spiritual reasons. It's also for calming the body and being mindful. You know, some people, they, they just sit and they, they eat in front of the TV. It becomes very easy for you to not chew your food well 
And if you don't chew your food well, it can get fermented in your gut. It won't be digested that well. So remember to chew very thoroughly and don't overeat and, and try not to drink a lot of liquids in the mealtime because you don't want to dilute um, the acid, the you know hydrochloric acid, and you don't want to dilute any of the juices that will help you um, digest your food. So try to sip if you need to on lukewarm water while you're eating, but don't gulp down you know tons of cold water, which I used to do, and you know now I, I know better. The next thing I want to mention is herbs and spices. As I talked about earlier, there's a ton of variety, and for people who usually don't cook a lot with, let's say, um, coriander and sage, you can get at Costco or IGA and at Tao mixes of organic spices. There's the one that I have on screen. It's got 24 of them and you can use that uh, when you cook roast in your soups and salads. The other way to use spices is through essential oils. And actually I, I have a few favorite ones that I use. Um, you can, if you get a good food grade organic uh, oil, you can use it in your food too. But uh, you know, I have lime, I have uh, frankincense here. I diffuse things to get rid of certain um, bacteria, microbes in the air. And this is much better, in my opinion, than things like Lysol, which, you know, can also affect your lungs in a bad way. And so, you know, just cleaning products in general, you can use essential oils or vinegar and water. And, and that also carries properties that can kill germs, uh, such as tea tree oil. It's very well known for that, too. Um, this is a drink that a lot of people like chai tea, you know, they think of chai and they have all of these components, but when you're getting into the cold season and, you know, maybe you're starting to feel chilly, um, you can make a tea like this, but rather than putting a black tea bag, don't put the black tea bag and don't use milk because milk is very mucus forming. So use all of those ingredients, the ginger, the clove, the turmeric, the pepper, and then at the end, add some raw honey. And this is a really great way to kill off some pathogenic microbes and to boost your body temperature. And by the way, there were mouth studies done that showed um, for the mice that had a higher body temperature, their immune response was actually five times stronger than the mice that had a lower body temperature. And this is the reason why our body induces fever when it wants to kill off these uh, pathogenic uh, microbes. Obviously you don't wanna induce fever every day, but you wanna keep supporting your body temperature as much as you can. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to supplements. In times of stress, I would definitely get zinc, I would get magnesium, selenium, and iodine. I actually use a liquid iodine like this. There's Lugol's iodine that you can order online. And one thing I want to mention is um, because of certain chemicals in our water and in our food, like chlorine, fluoride, and bromine, these chemicals are very much uh, similar to iodine. If you look at the per periodic table, they're on the same column. So it competes with the receptors on your thyroid. So that sometimes if you have too much of these chemicals, you won't be able to absorb enough iodine. So that's why I like to use this. And it's good for women's health, for the reproductive system, the breast, the ovary, the uterus. Um, it's really a, a good way to um, help with the health of the, uh, the glands. Uh, vitamins, vitamin C for sure. I take a thousand milligrams a day, but heading into the cold season, if you feel the chills, you can boost that up. Vitamin C and B, those are water soluble vitamins. So you'll pee out the excess. Worst case, you'll get some loose stool if you have too much vitamin C, but very rarely do people actually have too much anyways, um, unless you're going up to 20,000 milligrams a day, and then you'll start getting like burning in the stomach and various symptoms. But um, vitamin D3, I would definitely boost as well because of the lack of sunlight. You can go from 2,000 to 10,000. And if you want some customized information, like you get blood tests and you want to know exactly how much, we can always talk as well. And vitamin K2 is something that I recommend when someone takes vitamin D because D3 actually helps the absorption of calcium into the blood. But once it gets into the blood, you don't want it, you don't want calcium to be stored in soft tissues like your heart and your blood vessels, because that can cause a lot of issues like constricting of muscles. So you want to offset that with vitamin K2. K2 will bring the excess calcium into the bones and the teeth where it actually belongs. So that's why I would always pair D3 with K2. And then there's B propolis, which is a great antimicrobial. You could have that in your medicine cabinet. It exists in the spray form. You can spray in the back of your throat. Another thing, if you don't take fermented foods, I would definitely recommend probiotics. 
and uh, that could help with boosting the, the good flora in your gut. So what are adaptogens? Basically, they're plants that help your immune system adapt. And remember, I talked about the three phases of stress. So the middle phase was the adaptive phase, right? It's the, it's the time where, you know, you've heard of bad news. And then for the next few days, it's on the back of your mind and your stress levels are up, but your body is trying to lower it because you don't have an immediate threat. But what helps with normalizing that are things like ginseng, um, elderberries, echinacea. And I highlighted that in purple, the elderberries and echinacea, because those are very good for colds uh, and flus. And, and it's really good for uh, reducing inflammation in the respiratory system. Holy basil exists in tea forms. It helps you with energy. Astragalus, um, I just took some the other day. It tastes a bit woody. And basically it's really good for the respiratory tract as well. Ashwagandha is sort of like an Indian ginseng. It has antioxidants and it helps with circulation. And this actually is one of my favorite group of adaptogens. They're kind of fungus mushroom group. There's four that's kind of getting popular now. In the old days, it used to be very expensive to get it. But now instead of harvesting it out in the wild, there's a lot of labs that make it so they make it more affordable. So it does exist in uh, supplement form. Cordyceps um, doesn't give you that jittery feeling like caffeine does, but it gives you the energy and the clarity because it actually allows your cells to be oxygenated more effectively. It helps with the immune system, lion's mane. It's very good for your brain to prevent dementia, anxiety, and, and memory loss. And some of these were tested on anti-tumor and anti-cancer properties, and they've been shown to reduce um, basically the, the uh, propagation of these can cancer cells because it enhances cell death. So the, the normal cycle of cell death called uh, apoptosis. So normally cells are supposed to have a cycle, they live and they die. But for cancer cells, a lot of times they, it's sort of like they've mutated from that. And so some of these adaptogens can help to normalize. The fourth pillar I wanna talk about is exercise and body temperature. So exercise, you know, in, in times of stress, it's not really a great idea to do intense exercise. So people who love to do boot camp and train hard, one way they can offset the stress in their body is to take adaptogens. That's why so many athletes take adaptogens. But for us, you know, to lower stress in our body, you could do moderate exercise, like jogging, rebounding is great. Rebounding is like jumping on the trampoline, uh, doing jumping jacks. The motion of jumping allows your lymphatic system to sort of circulate better. There's tons of videos on YouTube. You can look for Pop Sugar Fitness Channel. It's one of my favorites. Um, and uh, this is just a function of moving and toning your body and your organs, massaging your organs. Then the other aspect is maintaining your body temperature by uh, taking hot baths, wearing warm socks at home, even, uh, you know, bundling up with your blankets, supporting your thyroid, which is like the, the furnace in your home. So if you have the heat on, you're not gonna start opening up all the windows, right? You wanna close the windows and keep the heat in so you don't overwork your furnace. And it's the same concept. You don't wanna overwork your thyroid to elevate your body temperature. You wanna you know, support it as much as possible. Then the, lastly, it's sleep. Okay, so there are sleep experts out there that just specialize on this. This is how deep the topic is. Sleep is a huge priority, and if you do everything right and you don't sleep right, you're still not going to feel great. You're going to get toxic buildup in your body, bad breath, puffy eyes, those are, you know, and joint pain, things like that, toxic buildup. So it's, it's great to focus on a nice, calming sleep routine. Um, go to bed consistently, best before midnight, because between the hours of midnight and 3 a.m., your liver does the most work. So you want to be in deep sleep, in REM sleep, the rapid eye movement sleep by midnight. So it's probably best to go to bed around 10, 30 or 11. And you can get that deep sleep within the three crucial hours that your liver is working hard. Avoid caffeine when it's like in the afternoon. Um, avoid large meals close to bedtime because that will really ferment in your gut and it'll be causing some kind of uh, anxiety at a low level. When I started taking kefir, I noticed I slept much better because it, that bacteria actually um, caused the anxiety to go down. I was able to sleep so much better. 
herbal teas are also available um, to help you sleep. There's uh, different types and there's essential oils like lavender. And some people take magnesium just before going to bed as well to, to calm them down. So those are just a couple of tips. I just prepared two very quick slides because I, I know I said a lot of things and I wanted to put it into a sort of like a daily routine so you can get an idea of how you can incorporate some of these things in your everyday life. You don't have to do exactly this, but it's just a suggestion. So you have a day with some lemon water, a little bit of ginger, that's optional, just lukewarm water will be fine to hydrate yourself. Then jump on the trampoline, do some stretches. Um, and then you can diffuse some clove oil. Clove is great to get rid of, um, you know, the bacteria that's not good for us. And it doesn't really harm our uh, body. Um, so if you can put the clove, let's say, in your mouth for a bit or different types of essential oils like thyme, that could also help with bacteria in the mouth. It's better than alcohol, in fact. So clove, orange oil. You can take an adaptogen. Of all the adaptogens I showed you, you can just pick one to try. Um, and then there's all these supplements you can take throughout your day, some healthy fats. If you're not getting enough, you can take uh, evening primrose or flaxseed oil. This is really good for vegans. They take evening primrose and flaxseed oil instead of fish oil. Um, and then chlorella, you could do that on a daily basis, cook with herbs and take time to do deep breathing and positive affirmations before bedtime. And now for you know, the, the time when you are sick, there's some things you can do to boost that couple of days to minimize the symptoms, minimize the duration of the, the cold or the flu. So boost your body temperature with hot bath, um, get some hot liquids and soups in the body. Echinacea tea is great. I have this one here called throat coat. This has echinacea in there, but it's, it's really good for throat irritations, respiratory irritations. You can get that at uh, IGA, I believe. Uh, you can gargle with salt water. This is something I would highly recommend three times a day, gargle with like pretty warm to hot water. Uh, obviously you don't want to burn yourself, but it's really to bring the attention to your immune system to get to that area. Um, you can use a drop of oregano oil in the water and gargle with that. The bee propolis is great too. Vitamin C at this point, I would boost it even higher than the thousand milligrams. Some people do 2000 every two hours until they actually feel like they have you know loose stools but if they boost it for a couple of days to just you know minimize the um the duration of the flu or cold uh, if you do get a fever take vitamin a because that's one of the vitamins that get depleted during the time of fever and at night you can rub some oregano or thyme oil on the bottom of your feet before going to bed i find thyme has the same um antimicrobial effect but less intense on your mouth and on, on skin. So that's why I, I, I like using time and make sure to go to bed early. So that sums up all of this, these recommendations. And I wanna thank everyone. And my last slide is really to say that you can connect with me through Facebook, through Instagram, and by going to my website as well. I really, really appreciate you being here. I wish you luck and I'm here to support you. So at any point, feel free to contact me.